Recently, whenever I read the news, I always see scary titles that says a recession is coming. In June 2019, South China Morning Post warned that a global recession unlike any other is coming. And in September 2019, The Guardian reported that a global recession is a serious danger in 2020. And in October 2019, CNBC reported that an awfully high risk of a global recession is in the next 12 to 18 months. Fox published on November 2019 that a probability of recession is now at 50%. And just last month, another news article reported that a global recession could hit sooner than you think. And when you turn on YouTube, you will see videos like this. Recession, it would be sometime in 2020. We're having a spreading recession uh, globally. Pretty good chance of a recession sometime in the next year or so. 25 to 30 percent chance uh, of a recession over, say, the next four quarter horizon. Frankly, with so many scary news articles out there, no wonder many people are scared to invest. But not for me. I'm actually looking forward to the next upcoming recession. Let me tell you why. So let's start. My name is Kevin and today I'll be talking about what is causing all this news, what I think will really happen and how you can best prepare for the next upcoming recession and benefit from it. Last but not least, smashing the like button to help out with my channel. First of all, let's talk about why everyone thinks that a recession is coming. First factor is rising interest rates. Over the past few years, the interest rate has been rising. What this means is that the cost of borrowing is getting more and more expensive. And when the cost of borrowing becomes more and more expensive, businesses will have to raise their prices to get the same profit of margin. And when things start to get more and more expensive, people tend to spend lesser because their income are unable to keep up with the price increase. When this happens, the economy will grow at a slower pace. On the other hand, if the interest rate goes down, the cost of borrowing will become cheaper. People will tend to borrow more, which leads to higher spending, which leads to faster economic growth, and in turn leads to inflation. This is why you see the Fed adjusting their interest rates every now and then in order to try to prevent a recession from happening. Recently, there has also been talks about a scary term, inverted yield curve. You see, historically, whenever a yield curve inverts, a recession will follow soon. A yield curve is just a simple graph showing what's the expected yield over a time period, or in simple terms, how much I will be getting by lending someone money. In this case, the yield curve belongs to the US Treasury bond. Traditionally, the longer you invest in a bond, the higher interest rate you will be getting. This is to compensate you for tying up your money in the bond for a longer term, say 10 years versus just one year. This is because the longer you lend your money to the government, the higher risk you will be getting. And with a higher risk, you will get a higher interest rate. However, when the yield curve inverts, the longer you invest, the lower interest rate you will be getting. So why is the yield curve inverting? Without getting too much into the details, investors are now fearful of the market in the short term and they now prefer to invest into a longer term bond. This will cause the price of the 10 year bond to increase because there is a higher demand for it and when the price increases, the yield will decrease. All in all, the yield curve is just an indicator of what investors think the market will happen in the short term. Next, there is an ongoing trade war between the United States and China. I will explain the whole situation quickly. Basically, US thinks that China has unfair trading practices and decides to impose an import tax on them to level the playing field. And of course, in return, China says, You will be taxing us, then we will be taxing you. US responded by saying, You will be taxing us, we will be taxing you even more. This holding leads to a situation where both countries are increasing taxes on one another. And this will keep going on until both countries decide to sit down and have a talk. One thing you have to know about investors is that they dislike uncertainty. When investors are uncertain, they will pull out their money from the market, causing the price of the stocks to fall. Next up, our economy is in a slowdown. We go through the downturns, recover, expand, oversupply, and just repeat itself all over again. We are seeing signs of this everywhere. The unemployment rate rises to the highest level in a decade. The GDP growth is slowing down. The earning growth are coming down. The manufacturing growth is also slowing down. These are just some of the data that is showing that our economy is slowing down. So what do I think? Is a recession coming? Let me put on my glasses because I just realized I forgot to. Tap that like button. Personally, I think that the upcoming recession will not be the same as the previous recessions. In the sense that this recession is not a bubble, unlike the 2008 recession and the dot-com bubble in the 2000. What it means is that if there is an upcoming recession, the market downturn will not happen suddenly. It's going to be a long and a slow process. I also think that the current market prices have already factored in 
all the news. Think about it. If an investor is fearful that the market price will drop because a recession is coming, then they would invest lesser into the market, hence causing the price to drop. This is also known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Market crash can only happen when no one expects it to happen. You will always hear those experts saying that a market crash will happen because a recession will happen every 10 years and that we are in the longest running bull market. But the truth is, no one can predict when a market crash will happen. And since you don't know when a market crash is coming, let's listen to a good advice from our evil talking Uncle Lion. Be prepared! That's right, be prepared. Pay off any high interest debt that you have. For example, those expensive credit card debts that you got when you bought those expensive clothes and the big TV. You don't want to be caught having to pay off high interest debt when the recession hits. Next, save up 3 to 6 months worth of emergency funds. Put them in a high interest savings account. Optimally, it should be around 2% or more. You should do this regardless of any market situations that we are in. The emergency fund will save you in the event you lose your job or if something bad happens. Reduce your spending by eating out lesser and by buying lesser stuff that you do not need. And instead, save that money and invest more. Build a war chest. A war chest is the cash that you can use to deploy when the market drops. Remember this very important thing. Riches are made during recession. Even Warren Buffett himself is doing the same. He has 128 billion worth of cash waiting to deploy in the case that a recession hits. Most importantly, invest long term. Remember that riches are not made overnight. Ideally, only invest money that you know you won't be needing in the next 10 to 20 years. If you find yourself panicking whenever the stock price drops, then you might be over investing or investing in the wrong stock. That's a famous quote by Warren Buffett. Only buy something that you'll be perfectly happy to hold if the market shuts down for 10 years. If you bought a good company stock and if the stock price drops 10 to 20%, do not ever panic sell but instead, buy more of it. The intrinsic value of the company is still good, regardless of the stock market price. Just remember that the stock market price doesn't show the real value of the company. It is just like how you do not see people selling their houses whenever the value of their house drops. What you need to do is just dollar cost average, where you systematically buy the stock every period. This will ensure that you get an average price of your stock, regardless of market up and down. There are many research that shows that time in the market will always yield better results than time in the market. So as for me, I'll be continually investing no matter what the market conditions are, having an emergency fund to prepare for any unexpected events, and having a war chest to prepare for any market crash. Personally, I very much look forward to a market crash because to me, it's just a Black Friday sale where I can get all my stuff for a discounted price. If anything, just remember this, invest consistently over the long term and you will be eventually rewarded. Investing is not a sprint, it is a marathon. So that's all for today. Let me know down in the comments below what you think and any topic that you want me to talk about. Like, share and subscribe. See you.